Hi, welcome back to week 41, where we are talking about decision impacts. This is your third and final video this week. And in this video, we're going to cover decision impacts and finance. We'll also talk a little bit about strategic decisions for your business. And we we're going to throw in a bonus topic of pitch decks and creating pitch decks. In video one, we talked about decision impacts and sales. And in video two, we talked about decision impacts and products or and or services. So I'm going to round it out here talking about finance, though we did cover finance a little bit when we talked about products and services, because there's some direct correlation in those topics. All right, let's talk about decision impacts and finance. So here are some questions that you should be asking yourself or things that you should know with respect to making decisions, financial decisions for your business. The first thing is this, do you know your operating cash information and do you know the impact that the decision you're making will have on operating cash, right? So understanding how much cash you have to operate your business and then the decisions that you're making, what if that has an impact on your operating cash, that's crucial, especially if you are operating with very little cash reserves, which is not uncommon for small business owners. So don't, think that you're in a weird position or that every small business owner has a great handle on operating cash because they don't. And it's not uncommon to be in sticky situations with respect to operating cash. And so just having an understanding of what that situation is will make it a lot easier for you to make decisions and to make good decisions or to at least understand the impact of decisions that you're making. All right. The next question is what happens if you have too little cash to operate? That is a question that all small business owners should understand and should at least consider. And there are a lot of options out there, especially right now, right? So as we're making this, this course, you know, we're coming off the tail end of a really rough 2020 and there's a lot of options out there for small business owners and people are talking about those options more and more and more. So do some homework and, you know, honestly, we have a few episodes of our podcast biz quick that are dedicated solely to talking about finances for small business owners and some of the ways that they can go about solving their problems. So we highly recommend that you listen to those episodes. And honestly, we highly recommend you listen to biz quick in general, but understanding your options, it makes it a lot easier to make decisions or to at least know what you should or should not be doing, right? So just get a good, good understanding of where you're at with operating cash and what options are available to you. It'll help you with decision-making, especially when so many things that we're doing right now require cash. How, how does your, the next question is how does your cash levels impact your decision making, right? So sometimes if we don't have enough cash, we are kind of paralyzed in how the decisions we're going to make because we're thinking, I don't know if I should do that. If you just even think like in your own personal life, right? If you're running a little bit low on, on funds and we've all been there in our life where, you know, your bank account doesn't have the money in it that you'd like, especially think about when you were in college, right? Um, if you are, you know, running low on cash, then if you're not aware of it, if you're not paying attention to it, you're going to get yourself into trouble because you're going to spend when you shouldn't be spending or you don't have the money to spend. Um, it's a little bit more difficult nowadays because, I mean, honestly, if you can remember years ago, more people paid with checks that rather than debit cards. And so if you're paying with a check, there's a really good chance that you're going to overdraw your bank account. But if you're using your debit card for most things, it's a little bit harder to do it, but still you want to understand your cash situation so that you're making good decisions. Um, and look, it happens sometimes, you know, we have rounding errors, I would say rounding errors. And other times, you know, we just, we forget to, you know, put, money or we forget to subtract money out for a payment that we made. Or if you're operating, you know, like a joint account with somebody, like your business account or joint account and one person spends and doesn't communicate it to the other, it can result in problems. So you really want to understand 
how what process you're using for for spending money especially if you're in a partnership or you're sharing an account with somebody else and what that impact will have overall on your business so it's just awareness and having a process in place is really important when it comes to your financial financial piece of your business and then do you have thresholds in place for cash reserves and how much you have so if you are you know running a business and you're like are we need to keep this account the balance there always has to be five thousand dollars and there are ten thousand dollars or a thousand dollars and if you're you know maybe maybe it's 500 it doesn't really matter what the number is but if you got thresholds, then you know at least that you're protected where the money's not gonna go below that because you have an agreement either with yourself or with your business partner or whoever, you know, your team where you always need to have X amount of dollars in your bank account as reserves so that you don't worry about running out of cash and you're making decisions based on available cash and knowing that you've got to keep some reserves in the bank. That's finance. Um, there's obviously more to it when you think about like um, ordering product, um, payment from um, clients or customers, um, payment terms with clients, payment terms with vendors, like what's coming in, what's going out, all of those things. And you really want to be as well-rounded on the finance part and thinking about the decisions you make and how they impact your business as you do on every other part, right? So when you, if sales, marketing, um, products or services, like really the thing here is if you're going to make a decision, you want to think through what are the impacts of that decision and you have to understand and, and process to really be able to talk fully about the impact of a given decision that you're making. So just keep that in mind and just ask, like I said in an earlier video, ask questions. What happens if, what, 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 why, why, why? Just continue to ask until you can get to the heart of really what, what the impact will be if a, if a particular decision is made. It's just really when it comes down to the nuts and bolts of it, it's thinking through your decisions all the way through to the end so you understand anything that might happen and you can say, yeah, I'm okay with that happening for my business or we can't survive that or that would be really bad so I can't make this decision right now or I can't execute on this, okay. How do you make strategic decisions for your business? That's the next thing I want to talk about. And honestly, you should have a process in place for how you're making strategic decisions for your business, right? Are you, what are you considering? Are you going through those four pillars thinking about, you know, the, the vision of the company? Are you looking at the, um, the plan, you thinking about like doing an assessment or some analysis on what's already been done or what you already have in place or thinking about what stage your business is in, like how long has your business been in existence? What are the goals for the business that you're trying to achieve? Like what do you do when it comes to decision-making to make sure that you're making decisions in the best interest of your business, but also decisions that align with the overall vision and strategic goals of your company, right? So there are times when, like we talked about this earlier, where you're gonna make a pivot and you're gonna go off course, that happens, but you still need to think through the decisions that you're making and really think about, you know, have we made a decision like this before? If we did, what was the outcome? What do I need to know? What am I not thinking about? Where do I have a blind side where I might miss something? You got to ask yourself a lot of questions. And if you need to bring someone else in to help you to kind of ask you questions and bounce things off of you to see if you're missing something like, ah, I didn't even think about that. I didn't think about that area or how that might be an impact, right? Sometimes you can't get through it alone because you're too close to the situation. All right. Final topic for this week, pitch decks. Look, if you are a small business who is looking for investors or you are thinking about selling your business or you are thinking about, um, you know, partnering with somebody, it's always a great idea to have a pitch deck. We've provided a PDF, which has, uh, it's a template that you just sample information that goes into a pitch deck. It's a tip sheet for you that lists out the different sections and what's included in those sections. It's fairly high level. 
But ideally what you want to do is be able to create a pitch deck that is reusable. So you don't want a pitch deck. If you can avoid it, don't create a pitch deck that is specific only to one investor or only to one partner. What you want is the pitch deck focuses on you and on your, on your business, on your leadership team, the problem that you're solving in the marketplace, how you're solving that problem, your financials, that type of stuff. And you're not updating it for every person that you're pitching to or that for every person that gets your pitch deck, you're only updating it when things change drastically for you. But pitch decks are a great way to let people know about your company and that you're looking for investors or that you're looking for partners. Um, we highly recommend them and um, we actually um, have created numerous pitch decks for our clients. So if you are in that position where you've made some decisions that you now need to take on an investor or you now need to look at getting some partnerships in place, let us know. We're happy to help you create a pitch deck. Um, and don't forget, join the, the monthly live Q&A. Um, decision impacts is a pretty meaty, broad subject. Um, really, when you boil it down again, it's just about making decisions and the impacts that your decisions have. But it's still an area that a lot of people have questions on because they don't really think through that entire process of beginning to end in their business of what each thing of what might be impacted. So don't be afraid to jump on a call and, and ask. Don't be afraid to send us an email. We are here to help. If you've got questions, we've got answers, and we love to help small businesses. So please let us know if there's anything that we can do to help you in this area. And we'll see you next week. Have a great week.